Hi, this is Eric from the Long Box Review Comic Book Podcast, and this is the July 2022 Spotlight on Previews. Hello and welcome to this episode um, uh, of the Previews Spotlight. Uh, as as I had already announced in the News Spotlight episode, I'm trying out this new thing where I'm just releasing these, these uh, formerly uh, three-part Spotlight episodes uh, as instead of one whole big episode, I'm now trying to uh, to break them up into the three separate pieces that I've been doing. So um, this is an experiment. Uh, so let me know what you think about this, uh, how I'm doing this, but I'm trying to get these episodes to be shorter, which means it's less time to edit and I can get them out more quickly. But let's get right into it. This is uh, the preview spotlight where I uh, offer you some things that I, uh, that I found in uh, the previews catalogs that might interest you, but they definitely interested me in some way. And uh, I'll start off with DC. Just a uh, few things here from DC. Uh, the first of which is the DC poster portfolio, uh, George Perez. Uh, that's weird that they call it the poster portfolio, George Perez. It's the George Perez poster portfolio um, that is coming out in uh, November. And so, as it says here, DC Comics is proud to present this poster portfolio of covers celebrating the prolific career of renowned artist George Perez. Featuring artwork from the New Teen Titans, Wonder Woman, Crisis on Infinite Earths, and more, this collection spotlights George's penchant for crafting some of the most iconic and unforgettable images in comics. Uh, The posters in this volume present but a fraction of the work by this beloved illustrator whose art has touched the hearts of comics fans around the world for generations. And that is the truth. So um, I... Uh, I was really hoping that um, uh, DC would do something like this, you know, or put out some sort of collection of some kind to celebrate uh, the, the the art and work of George Perez. And I'm definitely uh, going to be getting this for sure. Uh, next up is, in case you missed it, as I did, and I have been trying to <laughs> find a copy of this, uh, it's the Grayson Super Spy Omnibus hardcover. Um, so this uh, collects uh, the uh, series Grayson issues one through twenty. Grayson's Future End, Future's End, Secret Origins number eight. Grayson Annual one through three. Robin War one through two, and Nightwing Rebirth number one. So yeah, this is this is the time uh, in the New Fifty Two era where Dick Grayson was considered dead by the public, or was or was yeah yeah because he had been he had been unmasked uh, in. Uh, whoa! I forget now what that what that comic book comic book series was. Anyway, uh, but then he went undercover as a spiral agent, and that has you know that that series Grayson is one of my favorites uh, about Dick Grayson. Uh, it was just a lot of fun, and so uh, even though I have I probably have all these issues, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the super by a uh, super spy omnibus for sure. Celebrating 30 years is Harley Quinn. And so we get this uh, 30th, 30th anniversary special. Uh, it says here, you are, cordially, you are cordially invited to an oversized extravaganza celebrating the C- clown princess of crime's 30th birthday in this fantabulous special. So my question to you, dear listener, is which cover of a bajillion that they're putting out will you be getting? Oh boy, I was just scrolling and scrolling for a little while when I was looking at these uh, on online, and boy, there's a lot of covers. It's I, I've I've always found the Harley Quinn phenomenon interesting. You know, she first I believe this is correct. She first appeared in the Batman the Animated Series, and then and then eventually transitioned into comic books, and now she's basically like, you know, after Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, she's like the fourth tier of the DC universe. So uh, that's that's been a fascinating thing to watch develop over the years. I, I definitely know that Madison, my granddaughter, uh, is a huge Harley Quinn fan. So I probably, hmm, I wasn't going to get this, but I'm probably going to have to order it for her. <laughs> so anyway, also returning, so to speak, um, much like Grayson, um, is human target. So we're, now we're going to get uh, what they were were referring to as season two, but the back half of the uh, the twelve issue series. So issue number seven is being solicited, as it says here. The acclaimed series returns, and yeah, 
correct. Yeah, totally, totally true. Acclaimed. And uh, Christopher Chance has only days left to solve his own murder. The intrepid detective might have met his match, however, when fire smolders into his life. That's not bad. Uh, what secrets does this flaming femme fatale hold, and will the human target get burned? Okay, okay. Now, I was fine with the smolders thing. You know, noir, that makes a lot of sense. But now, nah, taking the metaphor just a little too far. Um, regardless, I am super stoked about the uh, the return of this series. I, I've talked about this before, I think in a poll list review episode where I... Uh, decided to wait, uh, wait for the trade on this. And then the more I saw images from the issues, I had to go find them. And I did. I, and I scoured back issue bins and ordered them online, I think, uh, to get the, the first six, well, the first four issues. Cause I was, I, I think I pre-ordered five and six when I came to my senses. So happy to have this come back and, and, uh, finish up that. So Greg Smallwood art on that is just phenomenal. So check it out if you haven't. All right, from Marvel, here is All Out Avengers number one. This is by Greg Land and Derek Landy. So, I and just a, it's a, just a new Avengers title, but it says introducing the all new Avengers series that starts in the middle of the explosive action and races to a shocking climax. Uh, I guess I'm really just offering this or, or spotlighting this because there there was or uh, there still is. I don't know. I, d- I didn't see it in previews, so I wonder if it's go- if it's on hiatus or it's just gone. Uh, but there was a a nonstop Spider Man series, and so we get nonstop Spider Man. We get all out Avengers. So is this the new all new all different branding that Marvel's doing? And you know why are why do they feel like we have to? Uh, why does it have to be all this action and, and shocking climaxes and all that kind of stuff? Is it the, the, the movie generation they're catering to? I don't know. It just, it seems like an, a weird thing, but, um, let's see this. So this, this involves on the cover, the preview cover image here. We got Captain Marvel, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Thor, Black Panther, Captain America, and Spider-Woman. Two spider people in a, an Avengers book. That's well, I guess that I guess that that was true before. That's not a new thing. Okay. Anyway, I, I've always I've always I've always enjoyed uh, interactions between Spider Man and Spider Woman, and there aren't that many, as far as I've seen. Um, if if you know of some great scenes between those two characters, please let me know. I'd like to read those. And then uh, finally, for Marvel, there is New Mutants uh, number thirty. But much like a certain clown princess of crime. Uh, there's a this is a an anniversary celebration, but this is celebrating the 40th anniversary of X Men's youthful misfits. It says, and uh, so they're, yeah, they're just celebrating 40 years of the New Mutants. I remember when that book was a new book coming out. Uh, my buddy, I think it was Greg, who was getting that, or it could be Travis, one of the two. Anyway, I was I was reading uh, New Mutants there with them for a while. Um, one of the variant covers uh, is by co-creator Bob McLeod, and there was a there was a, a a news article that I read recently that was talking about how they were bringing Bob McLeod back to this. I thought there that Bob McLeod would be doing more stuff than than a cover, um, but based on the solicitation, it doesn't appear to be that way, unless I missed something. But uh, but if you like anniversaries, here's another one. Um, from Image Comics, a new Reckless book. Uh, this is book five, Follow Me Down. So uh, Phillips and Brubaker coming back here for the fifth book. Uh, it says here, in the wake of the, of the 1989 earthquake, Ethan takes a trip to San Francisco to search for a missing woman, but almost immediately he finds himself going down a path of darkness and murder in a case unlike anything he's faced before. Uh, it says here, this uh, Follow Me Down is the most intense of the Reckless books so far. You know, a must-have for Brubaker and Phillips fans. Yeah, duh. <laughs> I've been I've been loving these Reckless books, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting this for sure. Also from Image is The Mighty, a trade paperback collection of the 2009 limited series from DC Comics. Not Dark Horse, as a recent news article that I read indicated. Uh, maybe it was a dark house, dark, dark house, dark, 
<laughs> Dark Horse as well, but it was originally from DC Comics because I bought those issues. Uh, okay, so in case you missed this from 2009, as the world's only superhero, Alpha One is a symbol of hope for all mankind, but at what price? While the population is inspired from a distance by their savior, police captain Gabriel Cole gets close enough to discover the mystery behind Alpha One's public origin and that his twisted plans to create a utopia are more dangerous than anyone could have dreamed. So this, like I said, uh, did I say this? This collects the 12-issue series plus uh, some, uh, it says here, three rare eight-page stories and a treasure trove of behind-the-scenes sketches and scripts. So um, I enjoyed that series uh, for the most part. That was, I think... That was a Superman gone bad story before we got a bunch of those kinds of stories. So that was, for that time, it was really interesting to see that progression and, and uh, how that story unfolded. Because it, it's kind of presented, well, it's a police captain, so, you know, a crime drama type situation. But how it unfolded and and the mystery uh, was being solved and how how they how they were resolved, I guess. Uh, and then finally from Image uh, Saga, Volume 10, collecting uh, issues 55 to 60 for those who are Saga trade paperback waiters. So you get you get the next the next fix for the, the wonderful series Saga. Uh, it says you're celebrating 10 years of Saga. Holy crap, it's been 10 years? Wow, it does not seem like 10 years. I, you know, even with the, the three-year hiatus that they went on, that, that, that seems like that series only just got started like five years ago for some reason to me. All right. Next up from Aftershock is Shock Value, a trade paper paperback collection. Uh, this, so I have talked before uh, about Eden from uh, Colin Bunn and Dalibor Talaji, and I, I quite enjoyed that that book. I think it was one of my favorites from last year. Anyway, they're they're collecting that with two others. Uh, for this this uh, this trade paperback collection, Shock Value. And so besides Eden, uh, we got Miskatonic, Even Death May Die from Mark Sable and Giorgio Pentrelli, and Tales of Mother F. Goose from Fa uh, Frank Thierry and Joe Eisma. Uh, and those two I've not read. I'm kind of tempted to get this just to read those other two, but Eden's just such a good story. So if you miss that, if you miss that that one shot, that oversized one shot, uh, here's your chance to read that plus these other two. So I highly recommend reading it just for Eden. Uh, from Boom Studios is a new series, Briar. And I put this on here, not just because of the concept, but you know it, it's uh, written by Christopher Cantwell with art by uh, German Garcia. So what if Sleeping Beauty never got her happily ever after? and instead had to save herself. Set in a brutal fantasy world that time forgot, this isn't the fairy tale you know. Uh, so the creators reimagined the classic tale as an epic, dark fantasy adventure. So that might be a future trade paperback for me, possibly. Faithless 3, the, the trade paperback, so this is the third volume in the Faithless series by uh, Maria Lovett and Brian Azzarello. Uh, this is collecting Faithless 3, uh, number 1 through 6. Uh, I saw this and realized I had not read Faithless 2, that collection. So I immediately grabbed that uh, and read it to see, am I still interested enough to buy uh, Faith, Faithless, boy, that's kind of hard to say, Faithless 3 <laughs> when I do my comic book order? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, I will. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with this, so, uh, uh, character Faith, uh, Faith's descent isn't always pretty, but it is sexy as hell. After Faith's paintings take the world, art world by storm, she vanishes as quickly as she comes, leaving tongues wagging. Is her disappearance a wild publicity stunt, a cry for help from an uninitiated artist, or something altogether too sinister to fathom? Uh, with Louis Thorne, or is it Louis? Uh, behind her catastrophic rise to stardom, who's really to say? So this is a, uh, this is a, I described this on Twitter yesterday as a NC-17, a slow moving NC-17 horror movie, uh, but it's, uh, Maria Lovett is, is the reason I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm reading this. So, um, 
yeah, it's it's very it's definitely interesting, um, for sure, and somewhat disturbing. Uh, I have to admit. So if that's if that sounds something like you'd be interested in, there you go. Uh, let's move on to Dark Horse. Here is a hardcover from uh, Ben Lobel and Mark Guggenheim called Fragmentation. When pieces of history from some of the world's most traumatic and horrible events start appearing as fragments of time invading our world, which is why I've added it to the list, it threatens all of human existence. One family discovers that their personal tragedy is at the center of everything, making them the only people who can help put an end to the fragmentations. A mind-bending original graphic novel. So yeah, that sounds sounds like something I would like to read. Uh, what what are the pieces of history that are appearing as fragments? How how does all this threaten uh, all of human existence? You know, just wonderful sci-fi concepts here that uh, they're playing with, and so I'm really curious. Finally, there is I uh, uh, hope I'm saying this right, Salamandre by I N J Culbert, doing everything. Uh, at least, at least in this solicitation. So, if you're familiar with the New Dead Wardians, which is, I think that's the first work where I encountered Inj uh, Colbert's work. Um, also, it says here the Umbrella Academy, You Look Like Death, Everything, and Brink. So there's, so there's some of the others uh, that Colbert has worked on. So this is, so, so I'm, 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 I'm interested because of the art of, of the, the creator here. Uh, what is this about? Casper Salamandre is a bereaved young artist who is sent to stay with his enigmatic grandfather in a land ruled under an oppressive regime, where there can be only one loved one, the emperor. In this land where flowers are contraband, music is illegal, and art is created in hiding, Casper discovers a world of art revolutionaries, espionage, and the secret police. His search for answers will bring him face-to-face with the meaning of sacrifice. But will anything bring him closer to overcoming his loss? That's kind of out of nowhere in that last sentence, but yeah, I just this is simply because of the the creator alone. So um, I'll have to take a look at this. From IDW, uh, the uh, Earth Divers is uh, a new series from uh, David Gianfelice and Stephen Jones. Okay, so Stephen Jones is a New York Times bestselling author, making his ongoing comics debut with this this title. The year the year is twenty one twelve, and it's the apocalypse exactly as expected: rivers receding, oceans rising, civilization civilization crumbling. Humanity has given up hope, except for a group of indigenous outcasts who have discovered a time travel portal in a cave in the desert and figured out where everything took a turn for the worst: America. Big surprise. Uh, convinced that the only way to save the world is to rewrite its past, they send one of their own, a reluctant linguist named Tad, on a bloody one-way mission to 1492 to kill Christopher Columbus before he reaches the so-called New World. But there are steep costs to disrupting the timeline, and taking down an icon isn't an easy task for an academic with no technical training and only a wavering moral compass to guide him. That seems like a weird character description bit. Anyway, as the horror of the task ahead unfolds and Tad's commitment is tested, his actions could trigger a devastating new fate for his friends and the future. So (laughs) they say say this is the beginning of an unforgettable ongoing sci-fi slasher spanning centuries of America's colonial past to explore the staggering forces of history and the individual choices we make to survive it. So this might be a little too close to home. Uh, but man, the 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 idea that the concept here is really intriguing to me. I almost didn't add this next one. This is Star Trek 400 <laughs> from IDW. Um, but then I saw that Will Wheaton uh, was involved in this. So uh, this it says here, celebrate IDW's 400th issue of Star Trek comics with this monumental issue highlighting fan-favorite eras of the acclaimed series. This collection of minis brings together Star Trek comics veterans in an equal celebration of IDW's Star Trek comics past and future. Let's see, it says, Join little Kayla Detmer, as seen in Star Trek Discovery, uh, in ventures in the 32nd century number three, on a new expedition. Visit the Kelvin, ti- the Kelvin universe, uh, witness a heartfelt tale by the next generation's very own Will Wheaton, and more. Uh, and there's some other creators here 
as well. But um, I normally don't uh, get these kind of things anymore, but I don't know. I'm really curious about what Will Wheaton has to offer for that next generation tale. So I don't know. I might pick this up. It's not like I'm getting any of the, any other new Star Trek comic books right now that I that I want to read. <laughs> uh, from Scout Comics, I have one thing called Nocturne County, a new series by Axer Aeneas, Aeneas uh, and James Roche or Roke. Uh, not doing great with the names today, Eric. Uh, Nocturne County is an adult crime noir set in a classic children's book universe, which is why I, I, I added it to this list, as if Dr. Seuss took uh, a few swigs of whimsical whiskey and ran amok through Sin City. I mean, come on, that if that doesn't doesn't sound interesting to you, I don't know what, what would. Uh, tales converge and collide in this county built on blood as a rhyming narrative follows an obsessed detective who puts his badge aside to hunt for his missing ex and a little girl in the scariest place of all, her home. Oh, it says here, enjoy the first issue of this non-stop in all caps... There's that nonstop thing again. Nonstop title followed by the ent- the entire story collected soon in one volume. Oh, I forgot about that part. Yeah, that's really interesting. So they're gonna they're gonna give you the first issue, and then give you the collection. Huh. I'm really curious to how that turns out. Is that a is that a good idea? What do you guys think? I've rarely done that where I bought a first issue of something, and then as as a tryout to see if I wanted to get the collection. But but it's a thing. I know I know other people that do it, but Scout here is embracing that concept. So that's really interesting. And finally, from Source Point Press is a collection of a series that I've been waiting for, uh Shelter Division by uh Ken Perry, Fran- Francesco Tomaselli, and Bob Sally. A mastermind is plotting to conquer our very existence. The government has recruited the most abnormal beings to fight this abnormal threat. And those who were the investigated will be given shelter and become the investigators. With the shadows of our society, these outcasts will need to push back against the darkness, or there will be no shelter here. This is collecting a, the three-issue miniseries. Um, this was, hmm, I remember the description being more compelling than this before, which is why I added it to my, uh, wait for the trade list that I have. So it doesn't, I mean, it sounds okay. Uh, but now I'm wondering why I added it to the, (laughs) to the list. Anyway, I guess we'll find out. All right. That's all I have for you for, uh, the July, 2022 spotlight on previews. If you have feedback or would like to um, suggest books that I I should be getting that I'm not, or uh, other things you would like to convey to the other listeners, you can do so by emailing me at longboxreview at gmail.com, text me or leave voice messages at 208-953-1841, or you can converse with me on social media at longboxreview, all one word. Thanks for listening, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.